This tutorial shows the use of the substance materials that are available in 3D Studio Max 2011 uh, with the service pack and they're also going to be available with more features in 3D Studio Max 2012. And this tutorial will just show the basic setup of one of these substance materials and how they work and how they can help you in your workflow. So I set up a basic scene here and uh, I'm just going to use it to show uh, what this material is going to look like. So that's the scene right now. We're just going to put a material on that sphere there just so you can see how it looks. So if I go into the material editor, um, the easiest way to set these up is using the slate material editor because there's kind of a lot of nodes going all over the place. For me it just is easier to lay it out in here. So if you go into materials, go. Uh, I'm going to use an art architecture and design material, but any kind of material you're using will work. You could use a standard, or you could use V-Ray materials, which is what I actually prefer, but I don't have V-Ray here. Uh, but really it's just generating maps. So any shader you're using that needs maps can use these substance maps. So if you just take, start with the diffuse, go to standard, and go to substance, and you'll see that it puts a, you'll see that this puts a output map here, and <clears throat> now this is where you choose which, which substance map you want to use. And this is what comes with the service pack for 2011. There's textures and noises. I'm going to go into textures. And you can download programs that will let you preview what all these are. I don't have that on here. But it would be helpful to be able to see. Um, I happen to know what some of these look like. So I'll just go to the brick wall. And there's tons of different materials you can create using these things. And you see, uh, this is so this is the output map you're telling it to go to the brick wall substance map and you can see that that actual substance map here has a diffuse, a specular, a normal, bump, a displacement, and a height. Those are all maps that are being generated from this one substance file. So this is where it can really save you time. Uh, I've brought the substance material into the compact material editor here now so that we can see a little better what happens. If we bring up if we bring up the actual map, that's what the that's what the brick looks like. Um, but the cool thing about this is you can turn up for example the age of the brick and you'll see what happens. Okay. Um, you can give more bricks in any direction. This is all procedural stuff. Um, the mortar... Um, so you can see the mortar looks a little more rough now. And This is all procedural, but the coolest thing about this actually is that when you're changing settings here, it's updating all those maps that I showed you before. The bump, the normal map, the ref the specularity map, um, all those things are updated procedurally as you as you update these settings here. So let me show you kind of how that's working. Here we are back in the slate editor. If we look at look at this, this is what we were just adjusting. But like I said, what's cool about this is that this substance material actually has all these maps in it and they're all changing uh, together. So if I take this specular map, uh, put it on the reflection glossiness for this particular shader, um, for the normal you can take... Uh, oh sorry, this my computer's not very fast so it gets bogged down by by these materials, but um, so if you take a normal bump, 
you can take that normal map and put it right there. Um, or you could just take this bump and drag it right to the bump map. Um, or you can drag it to, to this node here. Um, and then obviously there's this displacement map generated too that you can drag to the displacement slot. Um, so all these things, you can see all these things are updating according to what we did uh, procedurally with this one substance material. So let's go back into the compact mode. And we um, let's just bring this one up here. And we'll we'll say uh, let's make it look how we want it. So we'll make it 0.5 on the age. Um, the brick number is fine. I guess we want probably less bricks going this way horizontally. Um, mortar. Let's make it look a little older. This isn't my favorite favorite map here, but it gets the point across. Then you can change colors. Um, thing I don't like about these is that you don't have a ton of control over the colors. You can just shift the hue. Um, I don't know if they're going to update that at all for the newer version, but right now that's one limitation I see of this. Um, anyway, so we'll leave it like that, and then I'll show you what it looks like in the compact editor here. What it does is puts an output map before each map, and then that output map tells it whether to use the bump map or the other maps, the various maps for that certain slot. Here's one example. This is the specular map that it that it generates based on what we did in the substance material, and it, you can see it goes to channel index two, goes to you can choose all the different maps that are created here. For this slot, obviously, we want the specular. But when you go into here, you see this map again. Um, let's see, there was something I didn't like about this, but I'm just going to leave it for now. I remember now what I wanted to change. I need to set up the real world size of this thing. So we'll just say it's 8 feet by 8 feet. And again, that is going to update everywhere, which is quite nice. Uh, and there you see the texture. And I'm sure this won't be the most beautiful rendering, but it gives you an idea of how to use these substance materials. So let's check it out. That's what the render looks like. Not the greatest image I've ever created, but it does show how these substance materials work. Um, overall, I'd say that these substance materials are not the best looking materials, um, and sometimes you can't control the things that you want to, but because they're procedural and because they create, they update all the maps together, um, I can potentially see them saving a lot of time. If you happen to like, you know, if you wanted this exact brick on your, on your building, then this material would be perfect. Um, Usually I want more control than this, so I make custom bitmaps, but in a pinch this could save a lot of time. Um, so that's the substance materials. Hopefully this helped out. Thanks a lot.